Hey, Joe here from JTF Firearms. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you the strip down of an AR-15. Um, it's going to be more than just the field strip. We're going to take the trigger assembly out, the uh, hand guards off, things like that, uh, to show you how to take things down so you can replace uh, uh, parts. You want to put a different trigger system, etc. So we're going to be going through that today, and uh, we hope you enjoy the video. All right, so some helpful tools uh, of the disassembly is uh, a punch set. Uh, you can get these for anywhere from 30 to 60 bucks uh, online, Amazon, or wherever. Um, definitely get a mallet that's got some rubber um, heads on it as well. Um, and brass usually works better than steel. Um, you know, it's a lot softer. It won't, it won't damage the rifle. If you've been doing it a while, this should be fine. If you're brand new, consider the brass uh, first. Um, then you got your uh, takedown pin, in, indent pin uh, uh, roller. Uh, tool this is makes it way easier to put in the takedown pin especially in the front of the uh, the AR platform this is a multi tool uh, from Wheeler they have a, a product called the Delta series uh, this is basically an all an all-in-one tool um, when you go to disassemble it's pretty much all you need when you go to reassemble it's good to have a, a torque uh, torque wrench I can use with this and we'll be covering that in another video as well an upper receiver vice block is always helpful um, to hold everything while you're you know, tearing things down. And of course, the uh, Magwell vice block is always good because we throw the rifle right up on there and uh, can do all the work without having to hold on to parts and pieces and so forth. Okay, one of the first things we're going to do is remember safety at all times. So we're going to go ahead and clear the firearm. Go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear, make sure there's nothing in there, no magazine, you can see some daylight, and we are good to go. So we're going to go ahead and let that go forward. <clears throat> we're going to push on the left side, you'll push the, the rear pin in, and I always have a hard time with these guys. I'm older, uh, my fingernails aren't long, I bite them, I got nervous, nervous issues. So sometimes I just use a screwdriver or something to pry under there. Let's zoom in here just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's the rear. And we're going to just go ahead and take the, the front off as well with the takedown pin right here in the front. Slide that out, and there's your, your upper assembly. I'm just going to go ahead and put that to the side. And we'll focus on taking apart the lower receiver for, or the lower first including the butt, etc. Um, you got to be a little bit careful with these guys because certain springs are hidden in certain places and they'll go shooting off and um, you'll never find them, especially if you have a workshop like mine. It's kind of a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the buffer and spring out. The buffer and spring. <clears throat> so with the buffer and spring, there's a little detent right here that you're going to press down with a screwdriver or something and then the, the, the buffer spring itself, the buffer and the spring itself you just pull right out. So I'm just going to go ahead and mount it back up here. Take my trusty chisel, push that down as you can see now. You just pull it right out. Okay, so there's the buffer and there's the buffer spring. We're going to put those to the side. Okay, the next step <clears throat> is to untighten the uh, nut that holds the buffer tube in place. And that's where your Wheeler multi-tool comes in. This guy right here is designed for just such a purpose. Um, on the collapsible stocks it's best if you slide it out a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> I just loosen it up a hair and then I go ahead and take the, butts, the butt off itself. This is a Magpul uh, stock. Magpul, there's a little lever right here that if you pull down all the way, so if you go to pull the stock out, it, it stops. If you pull down on the release and slide it backwards, it comes off completely. And we'll go ahead and put that to the side as well. Okay, so I'm going to unscrew the buffer tube, but before I do that, I want to show you on the inside here, that retaining pin for the buffer right here. As you start to unscrew the buffer tube, you can see on the inside the tube rests against that pin. If you just start unscrewing the tube, 
this will pop out with along with the spring and you'll be on your your knees trying to, to find that sucker it's pretty small so what we got to do is as we unscrew the assembly we have to keep an eye on that also behind the sling adapter here there's another spring which is the detent pin for this takedown right here and so you got to be careful when you're pulling this off that that spring doesn't go flying across the room if you haven't figured it out yet when we do the video on how to reassemble the AR platform I'm going to mention buying extra springs they have nice lower kits you get I don't know 15 to 20 springs for each area and it just saves you a lot of time if you a knucklehead like me and tend to lose them frequently so I'm going to go ahead and remount this and we're going to take that off tube assembly off so I'm going to hold that down that detent down with my finger loosen that up a little bit more and start unscrewing so I caught the back side there's that spring I was telling you about Nope, it's a little bent, so we're going to, well, there it goes. We're going to end up replacing that because it's bent. So as I unscrew this, and there's the detent and the spring to go with it. Put those to the side. Now we can just unscrew These are mounted one way. There's a little notch, notch at the bottom, right there. And there's a notch, and when you go to put it back together, just slide it off over the notch. It only goes on one way. Okay, and two more parts. We'll go ahead and put to the side. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here. Oops, sorry about that. Come on, just a hair. Here we go. All right, so the next part is going to be the trigger assembly. Once we took the spring out, after we took the buffer assembly off, now the detent pin is in there. So if you just smack it against your hand, this is another spare part you want to have a few extra around, especially when you put it back together. We'll put that to the side. And then of course now the takedown pin falls right out. And we'll put that guy to the side. Okay, so now all we have really in here is the, the safety and the trigger assembly. All right, to remove the, uh, the trigger assembly, there's two pins. I just, this is a good time to take the punch and just pull them through. And sometimes it's nice to get a wrench on the other side to pull these guys out. There's the, uh, the front. Put that to the side. And then you can see as you, the front, the, the hammer will come out. And then we're going to go ahead and do the rear. And all the rest of the, the trigger, trigger spring. And you can pull it all right out of the top. You get that? Yep. Yeah. There we go. And that now is pretty much empty. There's really no point going any further than this. Um, you know, you could spend time taking all the pins and everything out, and uh, we'll probably do that in a, a different episode. But I wanted you to see at least how to get the trigger. Uh, a lot of people like to update their triggers, uh, either put in completely new systems, or if their springs wear out, they want to put in lighter springs, heavier springs. So this is the most important uh, part of the, the strip down. Normally you won't go any further than this. There's really not a need to. So um, next we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the, uh, to the upper and uh, show you how the pieces of parts come across, uh, come, up, come apart on that. Okay, before we uh, go ahead and take the hand guards and stuff off the upper, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to take out the, the charging handle and bolt. Um, so if you just pull back on the charging handle, the bolt will, will slide right out and we'll break this down as well in a couple minutes. Slide the uh, charging handle to the rear and it'll just fall right out of the back. And that's pretty much it. They do have tools for taking off the hand guards. It's kind of a wheeler sells one. You like wrap it around the string, but I think it's just easier just to pull it down by hand. Um, so that is what we are going to do. There's one side. And there's the other side. 
And that's what we have left thus far. Okay, now we're going to go just go ahead and use the uh, the upper receiver vice block. It basically just literally wraps around the upper receiver, like so. Put it in your bench vise, and you tighten it up. Okay, we're going to take apart the, uh, the bolt assembly. Um, first thing you want to do is take the fire pin retaining spring out. This is just basically a cotter pin. And pull it right out. Once that's out, just a quick tap on the table, your firing pin comes out. This guy needs to be cleaned. <clears throat> so where the gas key is, turn 180 degrees, pop her out, and then there's your bolt. If you want to at this point, you can take off the uh, retractor, extractor, sorry. Make sure we want to use the right terminology, so you just pop the pin out and the extractor comes right out. There's a spring in the root, uh, extractor you want to be careful of, another one not to lose or have spare parts around. And that's pretty much it for the bolt. That's as far apart as you really need to, to take it apart. So we'll get ready for the reassembly of everything here in a moment. Okay, so we've got all our parts and pieces. Cam pin. This is the uh, cotter pin that uh, holds the firing pin in place. The bolt itself. The extractor. Extractor roll pin. And the firing pin. So to put it back together, we're going to take the extractor, put it back in place, and it only goes in one way, and insert your roll pin, like so, and that's it. Take your bolt, put it in the back of the bolt carrier. Now the cam pin only goes in one side. It's, I guess you would call it fluted. Um, so if it doesn't go in, just turn it 180 degrees and get the cam pin in there. You see the cam pin's in place. Rotate it 180 degrees to that point. Then bring, it, bring the bolt all the way to the rear. Now you're going to put your firing pin in. And... At this point, you will put your carter pin in. The carter pin goes on the, you'll notice there's a wide side and a narrow side. It goes on the wide side. These can sometimes be a royal pain to get all the way through, um, especially if they're, they're somewhat old. They tend to split. Um, so you might have a, a little bit of struggle here. Sometimes you take a pair of pliers, uh, needle nose pliers, and you can grab it and try to fiddle around with it to get it to, to go in there. And this one just got lucky and went right in. And that's it. That's the bolt assembly. Whenever you go to put the bolt in, make sure uh, the carrier in. Make sure the bolt's all the way to the rear. Also, before you put this in, you want to make sure you put a lot of, of grease on here. Um, this is the one part of the, the rifle you definitely don't want to run, run dry. So I usually lube the garbage out of this, um, as well as the bolt, as well as the firing pin, um, before I put it all back together. So uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, reassemble the upper, and then we'll get back to it. So we'll be right back. I put them together, you can see the difference, right? Wide, wide goes to the wide end, narrow goes to the narrow end. All right, so put these in place, kind of just the, the opposite of the way you took them off. I put the, uh, the front end in first, pull down on the ring, and do your best to pop that guy in there. Do the same with the other side. Stick the front in first. Slap them together and you're done. Okay, so with the charging handle, basically if you take the charging handle, put it in a little bit of the way, push down and pull backwards, it will fall into the groove it needs to be in. Then take your bolt carrier, see the gas key on the top, 
the bolt faces the front of the rifle and you push them all together and now your bolt assembly is is back in place so your upper is now ready to go back onto the lower so next thing we're going to do is we're going to rebuild the lower okay we're going to put the uh, two springs on the trigger assembly one for the hammer and one for the trigger itself for the trigger got a specific trigger spring <clears throat> Make sure that this square piece here goes under the front of the trigger and then you loop those two around and that's it for the trigger. And let me zoom in just a bit here. This one's a little bit easier. Like so, there's your hammer. Oh, there's your hammer. That's it. Next step is to put it all together into the assembly. Okay, don't forget your Trigger reset goes over over the spring, the little notch. And then you're gonna go ahead and put it into the lower. And you're gonna have to push down because you got that spring in there. So you're gonna have to set it into place. And the fun part is sticking that pin, that retaining pin through. Sometimes you can cheat throw something in there to kind of solid everything up and sometimes you can't A little coercion never hurts As soon as the pin comes and is even, that's all you need. Done. Okay, now that we got the trigger back in, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, hammer in. Uh, I like to put it on the bench because you, there's a lot of tension behind this spring. Uh, to make sure it's in the right way, you just put it on the table and pull back and make sure the spring's in the, the right position. Should look like that. So we're going to put the end of the spring down towards the rear push forward and down and what you're going to do is you're just going to bend it back like it was ready to fire and lock it into place and then take your uh, your pin and put your pin back in and again you have to line up the holes etc just like we did with the trigger And there we go. So you can see it's locked back. If you pull the trigger, it'll go forward. All right. Next steps: put the stock back on, etc. Okay. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the uh, the buffer tube and the stock back on. So what we're going to do is take the rear takedown pin, put the rear takedown pin back in place. Let it hang out a little bit there. Then we're going to take the rear takedown pin detent, which is this little guy right here. And we're going to stick him in the hole in the back. And then we're going to take the rear takedown detent spring. Push the detent pin all the way in. And I just like to rotate this takedown pin a little bit to make sure it catches that. Then we're going to take the spring back out because we have to screw the tube on and that'll get in the way. Next step, take the buffer tube retaining pin 
and its spring. Put the spring in the top hole and then put the pin right on top of it. Our buttstock collar. You'll notice there's a indent right here and a notch right here. So the indent goes towards the rifle. So it's going to sit like so. The indent actually fits in the hole that's there. We have a groove on the bottom of the buffer tube. Just like so. I always bring the collar all the way all the way to the rear. So we're going to start screwing that in, the buffer tube. And when it gets so far, it's going to hit the retaining pin. You're going to push the retaining pin down and then go one more turn on the buffer tube and that'll hold the retaining pin in place. Turn it a little bit further so you can put the spring back in. The detent spring back in. And then you're going to rotate the collar over the spring and use the collar to push the spring and compress the detent pin all the way in. Once you get it in there, put your collar down all the way, turn your collar. Now you're going to need to tighten up that collar. This is when I take my Wheeler Delta Series, pretty much AR combo wrench, if you will. And you're going to tighten this down to 40 inch pounds. Feels about right to me. And that's it. The assembly is back together. To put the stock on, this happens to be a Magpul stock. Um, if you try to put it on, it won't go. There's a little pin right here. You pull these guy, pull this down all the way, and it slides forward. Once it slides forward, it won't come off, and you're good to go. Then we got to take and put the upper receiver back on, and we'll do that here in just a minute. All right, put the receiver back in, or the we're going to put the upper back on. But first, we're going to go ahead and put the buffer spring back in place, along with the buffer itself goes into the spring, which goes right back into the rifle, just push back, the retaining pin will, pin will catch it. Take the upper, mount the front first, push your pin in place, got to take it off the block, lower the back in place, push that retaining pin in. Quick little function check. Locks to the rear, goes forward, and that's all she wrote. That's how you do your reassembly. Quick and painless. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please click like, uh, subscribe to the channel so you can see the new videos that we're coming out with. And uh, if you have any comments, feel free to throw them uh, down below. Uh, if you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, go ahead and put that in the comments too, and we'll try to take care of you. Thanks for watching.